Get off the right wheel. As you can see, my topic is stepping out of your comfort zone, and I'm going to be 110% transparent with y'all. Most of you who know me, especially this front row and the SVPs, and people who I work with have been here for over 10 years, I don't like change. I'll be the first person to admit it. Mike will walk into my office and say, hey, I think we need to change something, and I give him that face like, no, we don't. No, we're good, it's fine, it's good the way it is. And he'll give me a look like, yes, Natasha, we do. And I'll be the first person to admit, when we started to move into the product section, I wasn't 100% on board. I was stuck in my ways. I was stuck in the old ways we used to do things. And then I just got quiet and started to watch. And I watched some of you guys. I watched some of the money that was flowing through. I watched how much money could be made with the products. And if we're gonna be completely honest, Y'all can make so much money with this comp plan on these yeah. products. Yeah. And then I had to realize that I had to do what we wanted y'all to do. Yeah. We wanted y'all to get into the mindset of we're not just a services company anymore. Uh, right. We're a products and service company. We didn't do away with our services. We still have them and they're still amazing but we have products. And our products are probably the best in the world. So with that being said, I had to change my mindset and I had to do what the topic of Coach K's Thursday breakout session was and I had to start minding the business that pays me. And the business that pays me and that's on my check at the bottom is Fadley. So. You're going to see, when I do this training, I'm gonna speak a lot about personal experiences because that's what I know. I know about my family and I know about personal things. So with that being said, if we can move to the second slide. Y'all know I love my nephews to death. Those are my sister's kids, but they're mine too. I have them as much as she does. We have 50-50 custody. <laughs> Y'all laughing, but I'm serious. I'm serious as a heart attack. Mike has called me on multiple occasions and there's somebody crying in the background. A ta-ta I need, a football being thrown, a whistle going on. Kane's called me, Kwame's called me, Kurt's called me. Kurt just called me last week and I was in football training. Those kids are mine, I just don't get to claim them on my tax returns. I told my sister she owe me some money, she's not trying to pay up. But, with that being said, I no longer have two nephews. I have three. If y'all don't switch my slide. <laughs> Wait. There we go. That's my pumpkin pumpkin. <laughs> His name is Noah Stevens. And he, I almost missed Atlanta National because of him. My sister was due and she has gone early for both of her pregnancies. So I went to Denise and I said, uh, I can't go. She looked at me and said, uh, it's a direct flight home. I can fly you home immediately if your sister says she's going into labor. Y'all saw me at Atlanta National, right? Y'all know Denise won. Here's the thing. As one, I say one of these things is not like the other because he's the third one. He is not the same. He different. He real different. Sean slept through the night. Michael woke up once. This one here. He just started to sleep through the night. I told my sister, I said, you will be looking for another babysitter because I don't do 24 seven overnight. <laughs> I don't do that. But here's the thing, I say one of these things is not like the other because it relates to your business and this is how. When you're an IMR, you're getting qualified and you're an ETA, you're getting qualified and it's coming to you easy. It's coming to you with no problems. And then you hit ED and you, oh, it's not that easy. 
flipping the ED as it was as qualified IMR and as ET. It's not, you're not getting those customers as easily. People not listening to you as easily as they were before. They're not trying to hear you too much because they didn't heard you while you was running for qualified IMR and ET. They don't want to hear you anymore. So you got to figure out, okay, what am I going to do now? We had to figure that out with him because he was different. So he was like going to ED and ND. He was the challenge. If you look at that picture with him smiling, he looks so cute, don't he? But imagine that from two to six o'clock in the morning. It's not cute no more. It's not. It's not. That picture over there with him with his arms crossed, y'all don't know this, but I was on a corporate white call that night. With him sitting next to me in the bobby, he was pissed off because he saw my laptop up. When he sees that laptop open, then he needs all the attention in the world. The minute that laptop open, he go to whining. You don't need nothing, you're fine. I fed you, I changed you, you're good. But how many of you can relate to that? The minute you start going to something more difficult, everything underneath the sun starts popping up. Everything is a problem. Your car break down so you can't get to that BOM. Your babysitter fall through so now you got three kids that you can't leave at home by themselves. What you gonna do? How you gonna get there? You gotta figure it out. You gotta think outside of the box. You have to come up with solutions. So if you have to, you take the kids with you. They gotta go. They'll become five links babies. It's all right, a lot of these kids is five links babies. <laughs> Kaden. <laughs> it's fine. But you have to figure it out. If you want it, you'll figure it out. Listen, before, don't even ooh and ah right now either. I don't want to hear none of that because if you notice, he's wearing the same thing in these five pictures. These five, six, diff five different emotions was in a 20 second time span. <laughs> I sat there clicking and he sat there giving me a different face every single time. <laughs> I kid you, y'all laughing, but I kid you not, he's different. He's not the same. <laughs> we wasn't prepared. He's like to snatch S's off people's chests. His mom went into labor and she, he was an emergency C-section. He was a trip. He liked the snatch. She said, oh, it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna do this natural. Me and my mom looked at each other and said, uh, you, you really wanna do that? That's what you wanna do? Then the contraction started getting worse. She started hollering a little bit louder. She said, I think I want an epidural. The doctor said, it's too late. <laughs> she looked at me and my mom. We looked at her like, we can't help you, boo. We told you four hours ago to get the epidural. Now we got Mr. Emotional back here. But guess what? How many of you have felt like this in your business? You go from looking like you ready to cry to smiling to I don't really know, to hey boo, to what you talking about? I do. I'm emotional. I put signs up on my, on my office door that says, if you don't have chocolate, a Snickers, a bag of chips, or a pop, don't lie for me. I'm not here. Nobody's here. Mike has knocked on my door. I said, nobody's home. He still opens, but I try. No, I get emotional. I get in my feelings sometimes. Y'all get in y'all feelings sometimes. And for those of you that I talk to, I know when you in your feelings. I say what I got to say, and then I hang up, and then I'll check on you later. You all right now? We good? It is what it is. You get emotional, but you have to get over it because you can't let your emotions run your business. You can't let your emotions let you figure out whether you're going to get paid or not this week, this month. You're going to let your emotions get you not a paycheck. And then you're going to be mad at your upline. It's not their fault. They tried to tell you. If you have an upline that's telling you what to do, don't let your emotions block what they're trying to tell you because you're going to block your blessing because you want to be emotional about something that technically probably wasn't your fault. 
You may have gotten upset because someone in your downline got upset. It's understandable. It's fine. But you have to learn how to get over it and let it go so that you can move forward. You can't hold a grudge because if you hold a grudge, the only person that's going to be affected is you. Because if you mad at me over something in your business and I'm still going about mine, you the only one affected, not me. Outside of the box, you have to learn how to get over things. I do too. I hold grudges a long time. My, my middle nephew does too. He will bring up something with his brother from three months ago. And we look at him like, what are you talking about? Why do you still remember that? He's 10. He remembers everything. I need you to forget some stuff. <laughs> forget it. Because he will hold on to that grudge and will bring it up with his brother. His brother's like, Mike, let it go. Y'all got to let it go. The point of this national is profits over point. Why? Because you're going to make more money. Focus on the money that you're going to make. The points will come, but focus on the money. You know why? Because the money just isn't about you. It's about them. I know a lot of y'all got kids in this room. How many have kids, grandkids, families that you're supporting? Focus on the profits. Listen for the pop. You know what sound I love to hear? The sound of a cash app. The cash app sound is my favorite friend because that means somebody sent me money. Cha-ching, correct. That's what your residual check should be. Every month is a cha-ching. You open that and you're like, yes, there's my money. That's what you want to do. You got to get laser focused. You got to learn how to think outside of the box. When it gets difficult, shift your way of thinking. You get in what you put out. Don't put in a C minus effort and then wonder why your check isn't an A plus. I'm going to tell you a quick story real quick. This one right here, that's my baby. That's Sean. That's my oldest nephew. That's the one my sister carried, but he technically belongs to me. This one had a problem when he was in football. They, and I told the SVPs last year that I got got. He wasn't supposed to be playing football this year, but they switched leagues, and then he went back. They called and said, we want Big Sean back. Fine. He went back. The last two weeks of the season, he was off. Like, his attitude was off. And his mom and, and myself were like, Sean, what's the matter with you? Why aren't you playing the way you're supposed to be playing? Why aren't you running? I'm watching him in practice, and he's the last one making the rounds while the whole team is running. I see his coach yelling. I see some of his teammates yelling. And he's still just. So I wait. I don't say nothing. I don't interfere with the coaches. The coaches are the coaches. I can't teach him how to play football. I'm a cheerleader. I'm going to do what I got to do to help him get better, but I can't coach him on the field. So I stay in my lane and mind the business that pays me. <laughs> he gets in the car, and what happened is there were two teams in his league, same team, plays for the Ogden Bears. There was an Ogden Orange, Ogden Black, because they had too many kids. They don't turn nobody away, so they just made two teams instead of just stopping the roster where they should have stopped the roster. Long story short, they took a few people from the other squad, put them on his squad that was going to the championship. What happened? His squad starts feeling some sort of way. Because now you have these kids that wasn't shooting with you in the gym, but they on the team. They going to take somebody's spot. So whose spot they going to take? So instead of my, my nephew minding his business and worrying about Sean, he gets in his feelings and he doesn't practice the way he should. And we noticed that he wasn't playing as long as he usually plays. We said, Sean, what's wrong? Well, they're putting other kids in before, you know how kids are. They put other kids in before me, and I just, they're just not playing me. And they said that they weren't gonna do that and that those kids weren't gonna take our spot. Oh, me and his, me and his mom went off. We said, oh, that's what they doing? Come to find out, we're friends with one of the coaches, very good friends with the team. Coach says, call me. Sends his wife a text message. His wife texts me and says, Drew said call him. I don't want to talk to Drew. Ten minutes later, I called Drew anyway. What, Drew? 
That's not what happened, Tasha. This is what happened. He hasn't been putting in his effort. We keep asking him. We need him to show up like he used to show up, but he's not. We keep telling him to run the play this way, but he runs the play this way. We keep telling him we need him to do this, but he does that. So now I'm sitting like, oh, this joker done played me. Because this is what it is. He knows me and his mom will go ham for him in a heartbeat. Because that's what we're supposed to do. When somebody come after yours, you put them behind you and you say, no, no, you come to me. Come talk to me about it. How many of y'all can relate with your downlines? You hear one story from them and then you find out a second one. Yeah. Right. It happens. It happens at corporate. I hear one part, Jamie hear one part, Tina hear another part. Y'all act like we don't talk to each other. <laughs> we figure out y'all be trying to play us. I'm gonna leave that alone though, because that's not my point. <laughs> so we're on the way to Philly at this point. So he gets in the car and says, Sean, I run down everything Drew done said. And he looking at me like, oh damn. Yeah, you busted. I said, so what do you expect to happen? I said, if you're not doing your job, what do you expect the coach to do? Leave you in there so the quarterback can get sacked? Leave you in there so you can do a half job at it? And then what? How are you gonna explain that to the team? You didn't feel like it, so you just didn't. You didn't feel like it. You felt some sort of way. You were in your feelings. So you weren't going to play up to your capacity that you could play at? Because trust and believe, when he's wrong, he gets corrected. But how many of us don't like correction? Me. I'll be honest. I don't like to get corrected. It aggravates my soul. I know me, what do you want me to say to you? I know me, I don't like to be corrected, I don't like to get told that I'm wrong. Can I be wrong? Absolutely. Listen, <laughs> I don't know who that is saying yes, but <laughs> if I could see you, <laughs> we will have a conversation later. <laughs> but I don't like it, but that's the human part of me that I need corrected. Everybody needs correction. Everyone does. But you will never be able to grow if you can't accept that sometimes it's not everybody else, it's you. He had to learn that lesson the hard way. It's not your team, it's you. You do your job, the coach ain't worried about putting somebody else in your spot. They call you Big Sean for a purpose. Live up to your purpose and stop worrying about everybody else. Stay in your lane and don't worry about it. But he got so in his feelings and he got so insecure that he let these new people that came on get in his head and make him feel like he wasn't good enough when nobody else was saying he wasn't good enough. His coaches never said that to him. His team never said that to him. So we had to correct him. And then we also had to issue a public apology to his coach. Because here's the thing, when you're wrong, correct. In the same way you are wrong and strong is the same way you need to correct it. So don't go talking about your upline who's just trying to help you and correct you and then say, oh yeah, she was right, and then never correct that information you gave out that was wrong, because you're gonna cause a division. You have to understand that you have to work as a team. There is, I always hated when people said there was no I in team. I hated it, because I'm like, of course there's no I in team, it's T-E-A-M. However, it's right, you are not the team. If you're an ED, your ETs and your IMRs are your team. If you're an SVP, your NDs, your EDs, your ETs, your IMRs are your team. If you're a Platinum, your SVPs, your NDs, EDs, ETs, IMRs are your team. 
you're not getting to that position by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. Martel can't get the platinum without his team. He holding it up, but he needs y'all to help him. He's strong, he can do it, but guess what? He needs y'all to help him. He need to know that there's somebody watching him back, his back, so if something starts to crumble, they can catch it and he not gonna get crushed underneath the rubble. But you can't be so laser focused on everything else that went wrong and everything else that you perceive somebody did to you, because if you do, he gonna get crushed. So he had to get corrected. I had to check him on the way to Philly. Now I'm already upset because I'm making this drive to Philadelphia in, a, in my car and I don't feel like putting any additional miles on my car. I have to stay in the hotel for at least a minimum of two days. I have work to do, things to do. I like to mind my business on the weekends. He's making me mind his at this point by going to Philadelphia. However, we're on this trip and we have this conversation and I told him, you're going to get out what you put in. If you're not gonna do the work, you're gonna be sitting on the bench. And I didn't ride all this way to Philadelphia to watch you sit on the bench. So I'm gonna need you to get out your feelings. I'm gonna need you to act like a big boy and put your big boy drawers on. And I'm gonna need you to man up. I'm gonna need you to do what you know you can do. Because if they didn't want you on the team, they wouldn't have purposely called us so that you can be on the team. Some of y'all was personally recruited because they know what you can do. But y'all sitting here wanting to half step because you may feel a certain way, because maybe you didn't get paid what you thought you should have got paid, but maybe you didn't put in the effort to get paid that way in the first place. Don't blame your upline. Be honest about it. I had to ask him, are you being honest about what you, what's going on or are you just in your feelings? And he looked down and he looked up at me. I said, did they tell you that they don't want you on the team? No. I said, do they act like they don't want you on the team? No, Ty. I said, then what's your problem? And he just looked at me. And then I told him, I said, and now the next thing we're going to do, you're going to go apologize to each and every one of your coaches. When we got up there, I gave him his little bit of time. I looked at his coach and I said, did he apologize? Yes, he did. But let me tell you the good thing about it. That first game back, when I tell you this boy showed up and showed out, <laughs> I, <laughs> I was live <laughs> doing these games. My camera work was terrible. Because when he showed out, that camera went everywhere but on him. <laughs> I lost my mind. Do you hear me? But when you write and you do things and you're willing to fix what you did wrong, the people who was cheering for you before that's always been in your corner are still going to be in your corner. <laughs> so the question is, what are you actually willing to do to fix your issues? Are you going to stay in that same lane that's clearly not working? Or are you willing to change your mindset and to change what you're thinking about and to change how you're operating in order to get it done? So let's be honest. The Platinums are in different, different locations. What works for Tupac may not work for Crystal's team because they're different locations. But you have all of these Platinums at your disposal, so why don't you talk to them? Why don't you ask them, how do you do this? How do you pique people? How do you get people interested? How do you get people to stay? What do you tell people when they tell you this, when they tell you they don't wanna do it? How far are you willing to go? How bad are you willing to work to get what you want? How far out of the box are you willing to go to make five links work for you? because what works for you may not work for Martel. But maybe what works for Martel may work for you. But are you willing 
to go ask Martel because sometimes that's all it really is, is you opening your mouth and asking somebody. Your start does not dictate your finish. You can have the roughest start in the world, but then end up platinum later on in the year. This picture here, my baby in the middle, number 72, and then each person on the side of him are my other two nephews. Not by blood, but number 87 is his brother, the one with the gray mouthpiece. Number 27 is also his brother. They started together on Ogden. They was the squad on Ogden. And what I say by that is when they were out on defense together, me and Tristan's mom would holler, nobody move. You know that line didn't move? That was the squad. But things change. And you have to be able to accept that change. Because Tristan aged out. So now the squad's no longer together. Now it's just Sean and his brother Jake. So your squad may change. But what are you willing to do to keep the dream going? So Jake and Sean, Jake and Sean are together still on Ogden. Cool. Last summer, they did a football mini tournament. They were in different colored jerseys. They're on different teams. So now the situation's changed. They're still brothers, and they'll correct you. They won't say best friends. They'll say, no, that's my brother. Jake's four older sisters, no, Sean's our brother. They give him codes to their house. We're like, why? So he can get in, he don't live with y'all. <laughs> he don't live here. But when he's with them, his name is not Sean Stevens, it's Sean Broussard. That's their last name. He's Sean Broussard. We're like, whatever, bye. Don't come back then. Stay with Broussard. <laughs> the situation changed. They're no longer on the same team. So in our head, and, and Jake's mom said, Allison, we're like, we don't like this. They're on different teams. Why wouldn't they put them together? You know how we are. We complaining on the sideline. At the end of the game, there could clearly only be one winner. How are they going to react to that? How are you going to react if your squad breaks up for whatever reason? Maybe one goes a different direction. They're still in the game, but y'all just not running together no more. At the end of the game, I said, Sean, I'm sorry you guys lost. How you feeling? He said, I'm fine, because Jake won. But here's the thing. Can y'all say the same? Yeah. No. <laughs> here's the thing. You got to be able to root for that other person on that squad that's no longer on your squad but still in the same game as you, still in five links. You still got to want them to win. You still got to want them to win just as much as you wanted them to win when they was rocking with you. Because that attitude of you not wanting them to win no more just because they're not with you or let's say they're still on your team but they've just outgrown you. Some people come into your life for a reason, a season or a lifetime. Maybe a season with them is over. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with that. But you can't be mad at them just because your season with them is over. You still got to want them to win. Because at the end of the day, they win, you win. I always want to win. So everybody on my squad got to win. Tina and Jamie got to win. Why? Because that looks good on me. They win, I win. I win, they win. So when he looked at me in my face and said, Ty, I'm fine. Because Jake won. My brother still won. I looked at him and was like, yes. Because he get it. Some of y'all don't get it. But I need y'all to get it by the end of this national. We all got to be on the same page that we all want to hear that cash app sound. We all want to hear that residual sound on the 15th of the month. We all want to hear that we making that money. Everybody's getting paid. Because the minute everybody in this room gets paid is the minute we double the size of the room for the next national. Is the minute we triple the size of the room the national after that. 
Because let me explain something to you. When I came in, my first national was in Dallas. It was a huge auditorium, and I was in a customer, <laughs> I was in customer care on the phone. And during the promos, you had to go up <laughs> the steep steps to hand out the promo forms. I went up them steps once and came down and said, this can't be life. <laughs> Number one, I was tired. Number two, I couldn't even hand them out fast enough because people were snatching them out my hands. And number three, it was just so overwhelming. I want to be overwhelmed again. That's what I want. Now, after all your situations have changed, your squad has changed, what do you do then? He's done with Pop Warner. He's done with AYF. We ain't doing it again. Could he do it this year? Yes. But this year is modified. Modified is before JV, which is before high school. And the modified coach has been waiting on him for the past two years. But guess what? Everything that he's been doing before ain't going to fly in modified. So how you operated as ET and ED ain't going to fly to get you to ND. You got to buckle down, get laser focused, and you got to go to work. You got to watch them trainings. You got to watch them people that you want to be like. You got to watch the Crystal Cadiz. You got to watch the Ron Williams. You got to watch the Camilla Collier Mullins. You got to watch the Kwame Gibsons and the Tashina Andersons. You have to watch them. You have to learn sometimes how to not speak and just watch. Because observing can get you a lot of places. But speaking before thinking and without having the knowledge when you're speaking can get you in trouble. Learn the comp plan. Learn how to present. Learn what the CVs are. Learn how you can get your team to make money because I promise you, if you make them money, you teach them how to make money, they will run with you to the end of time. So this year, <laughs> I'm going to tell you this quick story about this picture here. You see my baby, he looked like he suffered, right? He's doing a wall squat right now. And what's in his coach's hand is a medicine ball. And they're on wall squats, throwing it back and forth. Him to the coach, the coach to the young boy next to him, and back and forth. In between them wall squats, they're doing push-ups. After that, they're doing planks. And then they go right back to this. His first one-on-one -on -one session <laughs> was last week. They did this the first five minutes. He looked at me, <laughs> he looked at me like, when in the hell is we getting out of here? <laughs> I picked up my phone and texted my sister. I said, your son is about to die. <laughs> Send. <laughs> She's like, what happened? So I take the video. I wasn't going to embarrass him and put the video up here, so I just put the picture up instead. I took the video and sent it to her. She's dying. 5.55 rolls along, because it's an hour and 15 minute session. He ain't never had a one-on-one -on -one session before. The workouts they've been doing are usually group sessions, 10 to 12 kids, so you know it's a longer time period for him to recover. Not so much here. They did this, they did the ladders, they pushed the sled, they did everything. I'm dying. 5.55, he comes like this. <sighs> he looks at me through the night, he says, what time is it? <laughs> How much longer? I said, you're fine. You're not dead. Drink some water. Go back. He only had 10 minutes. I could have told him 10, but I wasn't about to put him out of his misery. You know why? Because I told him, you put in what you get out. You want to be on that modifying team? This isn't Pop Warner. Yeah, they waiting for you. They want you. But if you don't perform up to standards, somebody else is going to take that spot. You can get the SVP whenever you want to. But it comes down to how bad do you want it. Told him the same thing. It's going to come down to how bad you want it. If you want it, you're going to work for it. His coach texts me at 4.30 in the morning. I'm going to smack him when I see him. He texts me at 4.30 in the morning. Are we still on for Friday? First of all, why are you texting me at 4.30 in the morning? <laughs> Second of all, no, because I told you I'm out of town. I, we scheduled it for Sunday. So after I land on Sunday, I'll be dropping my stuff at home, picking him up, and taking him to his one-on-one -on -one session. 
Why? Because this one-on-one -on -one session revealed more of his flaws. Because what he was doing before ain't going to work now. That footwork ain't as sharp as it should be. The way he was jucking and jiving before ain't going to work no more. This is a different squad, so your mindset got to be different. This is modified. This ain't Pop Warner. Pop Warner is for fun. Modified, you start this on modified to get a scholarship. They're not playing with you. You want to go to LSU? You got to be LSU ready, baby. Because that's where he wants to go, him and his brother. They want to go to LSU. Fine. You got to put in the work, though. You ain't going to get in on LSU scholarship giving them a, a partial effort. So he understands it now. Before, he was scared. He said, I said, are you ready? He said, I'm nervous. I said, why are you nervous? Because it's one-on-one, -on -one and I've never had a one-on-one -on -one session before. And what if I do things wrong? I said, baby, this is your time to tell them that you don't understand something. If you don't understand, your time is in this one-on-one -on -one session because you have their attention all by yourself. So when you have those SVPs on your, on your line, you and me, you got them on your line, that's your time to ask them your question. Don't get scared because getting scared is going to keep you stuck. You got to ask them, what can I do? What am I doing wrong? Self-reflection, just a little bit. I don't like it either, but that's the only way you're going to grow is self-reflection. Hit the wrong button. Now, I don't talk about Mike a lot. Mike is the one in the middle. If you're an SVP, you know I made a meme out of him the other day. Mike is more like me, and I'll be honest. I'm not a people person. I'm not. I'm introverted. This stresses me, like to the max. I'd rather be, y'all laughing, but I'm serious. I'd rather be behind this curtain with Denise figuring out the logistics or doing my awards room, putting together the awards. I'm not a people person, but I got to step out that box and become a people person. You got to become some things that you may not feel you ready for. But if you want it, you got to step out and do it. I don't like, I don't like this. I don't. But you got to do what you got to do. Sean wants to be a football player, so baby, he got to do what he got to do which means when he died once a week in the one-on-one -on -one workout sessions, it's fine, I got water for you, we'll bring you back. It's okay. Micah, he wants to be an inventor. We got you, boo. His mom is working on something for him right now so that he can go out of town and so that he can get the knowledge that he needs. This one right here, I don't know what he's going to be other than stressing us out. <laughs> but his bib says, dream big, little one. That's why I use that picture of him, because you tell your kids to dream big, and you'll bend over backwards to make sure that they get what they need. You got to be able to bend over backwards to do that for yourself. Stop living to do as I say and not as I do. Do what you say and do what you want to do. Live it by example, because if they see mommy and daddy doing it, they going to do it. It ain't nothing that they know they can't ask us for that we won't make happen. If that's your mentality for your kids, your mentality for your kids should be to be able to give them the life that you never had. That means putting your face down, putting your nose down, and getting to it. Multiple conference calls with Noah looking dead at me, pissed off with his arms crossed. Sorry, boo, you're going to want things when you older. Matter of fact, you want things now. Diapers and wipes is not cheap. Michael likes to stay in Barnes and Nobles. Barnes and Nobles is not cheap. Sean stays in my pocket with his football workouts. This is not cheap. <laughs> Be on the verge of tears. Just take my money here. Just take it. But you got to do what you got to do. I have to step out of the box to make sure they have. My sister steps out of the box to make sure they have. They're with me a lot because she works overnight and she goes to school. 
And I told her, as long as you in school and you working, I'll do what I got to do to help you out. She doing what she got to do, so I do what I got to do and what I promise. But either way, they don't go without because we make it happen. When he was born, I sent Mike a picture of me sitting in the hospital with his little baby carrier in front of me in the hospital with him sleep and my laptop up because we had a platinum call that Monday. I still have to work. I love him, but one little monkey don't stop no show. <laughs> so if he got to come, I promise you, he's going to be in the office soon. I promise you. Why? Because I got things to do. That's what you have to keep as your mindset. You have things to do and goals to accomplish. Get outside of that box and understand what's in front of you, the profit that's in front of you, not just for you, but for your family, not just for your family, but for your downlines and their family. And this is bigger than you. It's more than you. When you give up, you don't just give up on yourself. You give up on your downline and on your team. You promised them a certain life. You the one who brought them to it. Stick with it because it's going to pay off for you and for them. Everybody can win. But you got to think outside of the box, and it's going to come down to how bad do you want it. So how bad do y'all want to get the SVP? Mm, no. How bad do y'all want to get the SVP? How bad do y'all want to get the SVP? Then you got to put your foot on the gas pedal. You got to get your kids in the car, and you got to go recruit and get them customers so everybody can get paid. And on that note, I'm Natasha Stevens, Director and Manager of Field Operations and Training.